Hello and welcome to Undervisee. My name is Soham and today we are going to talk about Attack on Titan season 4 episode number 11. But before that if you are new here then please consider subscribing to our channel since I do weekly anime and manga related content along with Attack on Titan reviews. With that being said, let's begin this video. Now, I won't be sharing any major manga spoilers here, but I do want to talk about one particular thing from the manga and that is in regards to the naming scheme. I was kind of surprised or rather I was kind of confused with the naming that was going on for this particular episode because episode 11 is titled Deceiver which mostly adapts the contents of chapter 109 and the very last part of chapter 108 now where exactly this confusion arises from well it is in regards to the naming scheme applied here because the very next chapter is chapter 110 which is called Counterfeit which uses the same japanese words which are used for this particular episode and it is called deceiver moreover chapter 109 which is actually covered in this particular episode is called guides and the next episode that is episode 12 is actually called guides even though it will mostly be covering the elements of the next chapter that is chapter 110 which is called counterfeit so i guess you are able to understand what i'm trying to say here in regards to the naming scheme that is applied here it's a bit confusing But anyway with that being said these couple of chapters from the manga were some of my favorite absolute favorite parts of the series before the quote and quote main finale of the series if you are a manga reader you know what i'm talking about so we don't need to really give any spoilers here but these couple of chapters really dive deep into the psychological aspects of attack on titan and how it really interprets the human emotions and human psychological parts of the chapters here The major focus of this episode is kind of given to Gabby and Falco and my goodness it's fine if you hate the character of Gabby that's totally all right i understand why you hate it i personally used to hate the character of Gabby in the very beginning but now i kind of do understand where she's coming from and how she has been brainwashed and everything i've already made a video covering this entire scenario you can watch that thing here but the most important part in my opinion and obviously i've read the manga so i know this is happening but still seeing this properly occurring in the anime once again just rekindle my love for the character of falco falco is probably one of the best written characters from this time skip era of attack on titan or rather simply the season 4 of attack on titan and his nuances and his explanations here are very top notch so what exactly happens in this episode Well the reason for Gabby's hatred is kind of increasing once again here because she attacks and kills an Eldian soldier here and she and Falco escape from the prison because of all of this even though the soldier was actually worried about her because she was acting sick here and it is from this point onwards when Falco actually tries to question Gabby as to why exactly you are doing this these people genuinely cared for you and you are just going on talking about devil 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 according to him he totally understands why she is doing so but at the same time these people are not bad all of these people cannot be bad because you saw that thing from your very own eyes and of course the question is raised as to why exactly is he a traitor why did he betray marley and everything now in the midst of their discussion in the midst of their mental breakdown and of course gabby is having a literal mental breakdown here she is just not able to grasp the things she is seeing things right in front of her eyes but she is not able to understand the reality of the things because she has been brainwashed to such an extent right from a very childhood days she has been spoon fed one particular word that your race is an evil your race is that of a devil and you have to kill them you have to destroy them only then you can attain salvation and that is aptly on display here but in the midst of all their discussions she is discovered by none other than kaya and oh boy here we go again with the potato girl this this series knows how to make you cry or at least make you feel sad for the characters because if you all don't remember kaya is the same character whom sasha had actually saved all the way back in season 1 and she is the same character here and all of these things are coming back to a cycle and this was really well done honestly this episode is a really great example of human psychology as well as political propaganda because that is also aptly on display here so kaya basically picks up falco and gabby and took them to the blouse table because they were hungry and the blouse table obviously accepted them because all the kids there were orphans and because of the orders of queen historia all these people all these children were cared for and of course we all know that the blouse family is a very kind hearted family so they are of course going to accept all these people Now in the later half of this episode we get more nuances in regards to the entire situation and I'm going to cover them 
But before that, we get the situation surrounding Hanji, and now the political propaganda starts properly once again because there are several different factions who are trying to understand some things. I'm not going to really cover the parts of Hizuru here because that is going to be mostly a spoiler-related stuff. I cannot really give any major explanations here because that will really dive into the spoiler territory. We are going to see more of her in the upcoming chapters, so let me just stop right there. But on the other hand, Hanji is basically being overwhelmed with questions from the general public because information has leaked regarding Eren. Yes, Eren has been imprisoned. That information has leaked to the general public, and of course, the people who are worshiping him as the savior of the alien race, they are obviously questioning the military now as to why Eren is being imprisoned here when he should be the light of this people. He should be the one who is leading the charge for the entire alien race. And we get more informations about all of this because she has to deal with insubordination here because Flock and the others have leaked the sensitive information in regards to Eren to the general public because they are the parts of a very sensitive group called the Yeagerists. This is kind of a little bit spoiler, but of course we all know this thing, we all saw this thing in the trailer and this very thing is going to be explored in much bigger details in the upcoming episodes. So just saying this name is not going to be any major spoilers whatsoever, so I'm just name dropping this thing here. But this was basically the introduction of the Jaegerists and all the major things that they are going to do here. But Hanje basically says that they are being imprisoned for the time being because they have leaked sensitive information in regards to Eren Jaeger. Now thankfully this episode mostly covers all the stuff from the manga. Very little part is actually omitted here and I'm very glad to see that the Hanje flashback is actually added here where she talked to Sanus all the way back in the prison and how someone always needs to fill up the role because they themselves cannot give in to frustration. This was a really good flashback and at the same time there's some other stuff in relation to Mikasa because she is locking up Louise, one of the detainers in her cell. And who is Louise? Well, Louise is the girl whom Mikasa actually saved during the Battle of Tross District and that inspired her to actually join the Survey Corps. And there's a very interesting conversation that she has here and Louise basically asks Mikasa more about Eren and Mikasa tries to shut her up and says that just stop talking, you are going to increase your punishment. And all of these things actually trigger Mikasa the memories of her childhood where Eren saved her from the kidnappers all the way back. And in the meantime, we get more explanation as to how Eren was able to do all the things that he did here because Pixis is actually visiting Yelena and she's being interrogated here. We are of course going to get more information in this particular regard in the future of the series. So I'm just going to leave things here that she's the one who actually helped Eren in this particular regard and we are going to get to see more of these things in the future so just stay tuned for that. But for now let's head back to the Gabby and Falco stuff. They were doing work at the stables and there's a very hilarious moment of Gabby's head being chewed by the horses and she's just shaking and screaming saying that all of these things are the works of the devil yada 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 and they are having a fight. And in the meantime Kaya comes up and she is basically knowing the entire thing from the very beginning that they are a part of the Marleyan army. Although she doesn't know their real name because they have given a fake name to her but she says that she knows that they are a part of the Marleyan race. And listening to all of this Gabby actually tries to attack Kaya but Falco saves her and stops her from doing all this nonsense and Falco basically reminds her that not everything is black and white and you cannot do all of these things because you saw with your very own eyes that these people actually cared for you. Now the best part of this chapter and the most emotional part of this chapter comes up towards the very end and that is when Kaya takes her to her old village and tells Gabby and Falco her side of the story as to how her mother was eaten alive in front of her very own eyes. Kaya says that she knows that there are people outside of the walls and she knows that these people calls the aliens devils but she just simply asks one question. If she's a devil, why did she had to suffer so much? Why did her mother had to suffer so much pain while she was dying? Kaya simply asks why. To all of this, Gabby proclaims that Elia was the major reason as to why all these problems arrived in the very first place and she should not feel like the victim here. But Kaya does not understand. Kaya says that her mother was born on paradise and she never killed anyone. She never tormented anyone. So why did her mother had to die in such a painful and in such a terrible manner? And this is where things started to escalate because Gabby was not able to understand the gravity of the situation. Gabby was so brainwashed that she was not able to understand the pain of anyone else. For her, the entire Paradise Island was just a race of devils. And at this moment, she didn't really care as to why did Kaya's mother had to die because for her, her only conscience here was that they had to repent for the sins of their past. 
they had to apologize for all the problems that happened in the past but falco stops her and falco reveals that that her mother was a casualty of a reconnaissance mission and she was totally not at fault here and basically it was not her fault that day obviously gabby berates falco for revealing all these military secrets and military tactics but falco says that i don't care i really don't care this goes back to the starting part of this episode as well where falco tears away her armband and i absolutely love the character of falco Sure I totally understand why Gabby is doing and why Gabby is saying all these things. I've already made a video talking about as to why it is not exactly justified to hate the character of Gabby, but at the same time I think Falco's character is written very good here and that is aptly displayed in the anime as well. Falco also goes on to ask Kaya as to how did she manage to survive and then she revealed the truth that It was a brave girl, a very brave girl who came to save her with an axe and used her own body as a human shield that allowed Kaya to escape. And Kaya reveals that if that girl had been alive today, she would have also helped Gabby and Falco. And as a result of that incident, Kaya wants to become someone as brave as her, and of course that brave girl was none other than Sasha Blouse. So this is a full circle of things because Sasha was actually killed by Gabby nonetheless. So this entire thing comes to a full circle here. This was an outstanding episode in my opinion. There's not much of animation here really, but overall I'm a huge fan of this episode. Moreover, there's a post-credit scene in this particular episode where we see Marley and the aftermath of the battle and Marley basically knows that Zeke has probably betrayed them. and Reiner and the others say that they cannot really wait for 6 months and they have to attack as soon as possible so there you have it these were my quick thoughts on episode 11 of attack on titan season 4 so what do you guys think about all of this please mention your thoughts in the comment section below so that's it for today guys thank you so much for watching please give this video a thumbs up if you like it share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel for more this is wonder yc and i'll see you soon in the next episode